We've had a great Thanksgiving. This is uh, folks that are leftover, didn't go out of town. And we're all leftovers, like like the turkey and the dressing and everything uh, you got at your house called leftovers. We're kind of leftovers and we're still in town. But we're glad you're here this morning. And the scripture says, we're to enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. And this is a good weekend for us to do that. But we're going to sing it. So I want you to stand together with us.
each and every week, what you don't see is what goes on behind the scenes every single day throughout the entire week. And that's people that are reaching out to those in need throughout the week, whether that's through prayer, whether that's through financial help, whether that is just being there for a shoulder to cry on or here to listen to. And that is not made possible without your giving. So first we want to thank you for allowing Life Change Church to be a place where you take the first fruits of what God has given to you and giving them to Life Change Church. Thank you for doing that. As our ushers, ushers come forward, we're going to get ready to give. And don't forget about the reason for the season that we are coming into. We, we, all, we don't, don't want to run over Thanksgiving like we do all the time and just forget about it. But Thanksgiving has come. It's gone. We're thankful. But now we're getting into a season of giving. And as you're doing your shopping, as you're thinking about others, think about Christ and what he's done for you. And give to him first. And you will see that you will be so blessed. And you will be... Um, you will, all your needs will be met. I know sometimes we think that, you know, if I give this last $10 I have, you know, for this bill or that bill, our needs won't be met. But you will find out that God's going to give you $100 or, you know, $50 or whatever. I better not say a specific number because I don't want you guys to hold me to it. But give God the first fruits and he will bless you. Let's pray as um, we're about to take our offering. Mary and, and Travis will take that up um, and then we'll sing a little bit. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the wonderful Thanksgiving season we just had, God, for um, our church people coming together and helping those who are less fortunate than us on Thanksgiving Day, being able to take the food there and to sit down with others who, God, without your people would have been so lonely on a day where they shouldn't be, God. And I just pray that um, you would help us to remember you and reason for the season as we go into these next several weeks of Christmas, God, that you would just allow us to make you first and foremost in everything in our lives, whether that's through work or friendships or giving, God, um, our community, that you would allow us to remember you first so that we can see you change lives through the giving of other of others here at Life Change Church. Thank you for the people here, God. We wouldn't be Life Change Church without them. And, and Richard and I are so blessed to be a part of this church family. I pray that you would just take this offering now and that you would further it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
chains of our sin, pay the price for us on the cross, we can never stop singing. Amen. Amen. A little track change here this morning. Never going to stop singing. We're going to let our voices rise in this place today.
Thank you, Lord. And this holiday weekend of Thanksgiving, I can't think of anything better to say than just thank you, Jesus. Oh.
birth as a baby and eventually died on the cross for us, for our sins. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor this morning. In Jesus' name. so much, just the hope of eternity forever and ever with him through Christ Jesus is enough to celebrate, and uh, I don't know what challenges you woke up and faced today, what struggles may be going on in your life, your relationships, uh, whatever uh, you carry in here, please understand that uh, through Christ Jesus we have a hope that we don't stand on our own strength or in, or in our own merit, uh, but that we can stand on Christ who is our firm Foundation. So we're talking about Happy Tanks Giving, right? Wrapping up this series, the weapon of our praise. And uh, too many times we don't consider uh, praise a weapon um, in the arsenal and the armory of the believer, right? Uh, we get caught up in the negativity that goes on around us. And my soul, is there not a ton of negativity that goes on around us. You don't even have to make it to the water cooler anymore at work. You just pop your head up uh, there at your cubicle and negativity is all around. We have it on our news feeds now, uh, our Facebook pages, right? Uh, somebody always needing a little bit more, uh, somebody never quite having it good enough, uh, somebody always wanting one other thing, right? And then the negativity that goes on with all of that. And so how do we break out of this mold and get to a place where Praise becomes the center of who we are. We've talked about several things over the last number of weeks. People's who, uh, people whose circumstances were changed by the power of this weapon of praise. Uh, we talked about the fact that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in a moment of faith, praised God uh, that he was able to deliver them from the fire if he would so choose. Right Last week we talked about uh, David who returning to Ziklag. Uh, went and encouraged himself in the Lord. Right as he was uh, speaking of being stoned, uh, he caught himself away and encouraged himself and praised God. Hey, I know God's calling, God's anointing on my life is that I will be the next king of Israel and I'm not yet ascended to the throne. The crown's not yet rested upon my brow. Therefore, I know uh, that I'm going to escape this trial and God is going to, to deliver me. And so David rejoiced and praised God in the midst of difficult circumstances. So this week I want to give you a little bit of practical application, a little prac out. How do we put this, uh, the, the understanding that uh, to praise God is to thank him and to realize who he is, uh, the nature of his being, uh, where he's been strong on my behalf in the past, living uh, out of uh, living out of remembrance instead of fret and fear, for I know this, God has delivered me um, abundantly more uh, than, uh, than the struggles that I'm facing today. Man, as I look back and realize all the times where God has shown up strong on my behalf, really, um, to be honest, anything that I would face today would pale in comparison to the places where he's already shown up strong on my behalf. 
Yet too many times, you're just like me, I'm just like you, we're met with new adversity, we're met with new circumstances, new trials, new temptations, and all of a sudden, man, we begin to believe the lie of the enemy, right? And so how can we undo that today? So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, in your Bibles, if you've got it, Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7, say this, Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing songs of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. Hey, have you experienced that in your life? Can you say amen right there? How long has it been since you stopped and thought and considered uh, when it was that God was a rock, a firm foundation for you? Maybe it was that you were going through relational turmoil or, uh, or child-rearing turmoil. We've got a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old. Who understands that I'm thankful uh, for the rock? The foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I can stand steadfast knowing uh, that if you train them up in the way that they should go, listen, they will not depart from it. Uh, there may be some detours and some side steps and some, and some disappointments, uh, but thankful for the promises of God, right? We've seen God show up strong on our, uh, on our behalf. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands form the dry land, too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. Man, we have so much to praise and thank God for. Some things I wanted to think about today were, uh, were just some simple things that, uh, that, that praise uh, won't do if you don't invoke it. Right? I, I love a good action movie from time to time. I uh, mean, I, I love even the far-fetched ones. And uh, that's what's great about the holidays, man. Just uh, all the, all the uh, smorgasbord of television watching, you can imagine. I love sitting down to watch uh, all of the, uh, uh, the Rambos. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Right? How about Commando starting, uh, starring Arnold? You know? Um, man, how about the lethal weapons? You know what I'm talking about. A singular, a singular hero going against all the troops of darkness Sinister plots, nefarious thoughts, all to be foiled by one man with the purest of thoughts, right? And, and uh, ducking machine gun fire, Gunner and I were watching Hawaii Five-0 last night before we went to bed. And, uh, and here's uh, Commander McGarrett, and he's got a pistol uh, versus some armed robbers, all with, with submachine guns. And I'm like, man, Gunner, check it out. Uh, Commander McGarrett is just absolutely whooping it on against all odds. Right? We understand that even Christ in his own narrative uh, seemed to have lost the day uh, to the evil forces, but we know he's coming back uh, with a sequel uh, to defeat death and hell. Right? And so we understand that, uh, that you can't show what you don't know. Too many times people are, uh, are wanting to lean on this, this weapon of praise. Hey, uh, Richard, I'm going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to all of a sudden start praising God for what I have. Right? And it's not so much about what you have or what God's given to you, but rather um, it's, the, it's the sum and the source of the solution to our situations, who is Christ Jesus. Hey, he may meet the financial need, but the financial need wasn't our greatest need. A greater need for Christ was our truest need. Does that make sense? Right. And so as, we're, um, as Christ many times will force us into situations on which we'll have to deepen our faith and lean on him more wholly, Right? We understand that, that hey, God's going to meet the relational need, but the true need that's going to be met in our hearts and lives is in that, in that pursuing and pushing um, to find favor again in the sight of the one with whom fellowship has been broken. Right? We deepen our relationship and strengthen our cords with Christ. And so that is the, the power of praise, is that even in the situations in our past, Hey, we may look back at our past and say, hey, God delivered me from legal troubles back then. And it was great that he did, and he has, and I praise him for it, right? And we say, uh, I thank you for the, the legal trouble that he uh, allowed me to escape from. But hey, I remember in the middle of those legal troubles, I was making some commitments to God, some promises. Hey, you know, Lord, if you ever let me out of this one, right? Maybe that, uh, that physical ailment that hit your body. Lord, if you would just allow me to, to have my strength again and my physical, uh, my physical wellness, God, I will serve you with all the days of my life that you give me. Uh, Lord, I'm going to do that thing, right? And you can look back at those times 
And you see God meet the need financially, relationally, physically, however it manifests itself. But the sweetest moments in that time was when God met our needs spiritually. Right. right, the sweetness of that communion with him, going through our darkest hours, yet finding him shining the brightest. Martin Luther King Jr. said, uh, nights are difficult, but the best thing about nights is that you can only see stars in the darkness. And I don't know if you've ever gotten out away from the city lights, and uh, man, just uh, I remember being at 29 Palms, laying underneath uh, the stars, and I had never seen it like that, just desert for miles and miles and miles and miles around. You can actually tell that the Milky Way was a little bit milky. And, uh, and I'm sitting there going, wow, God is truly incredible. And that may be your situation that you're going through the darkest night you can possibly imagine in your life right now. Hey, listen, these are the most beautiful times to be able to see Christ on uh, show up strong on our behalf. But, but understand, understand that I must get to a place where I know Christ if I'm ever going to see him show up strong on my behalf, right? Many times we're, uh, we're running to, in the, in the middle of difficult circumstances, we're running to uh, bank accounts, uh, spiritually speaking, that are dry. There's no deposits that have been made. Uh, you've not been walking in the Word. You've not been walking um, in prayer and in communion with His Spirit. Uh, you've not been living for God or for Christ, and all of a sudden, adversity hits, right? And our faith is rocked. We take steps back. Instead of Praising God in the storm, we, we begin to buy into the lies of the enemy um, that our God may not be uh, greater than he that is in the world. Right? Consider this metaphor that, uh, that, that God himself uh, God Himself is the commander of the battle. Right? He, he sees above all, the book of Isaiah tells us that his thoughts are, are above our thoughts, his ways are not our ways. We understand that God is exceedingly wise. Um, who can understand the height, uh, nor the depth, nor the breadth? Um, of the love of God, right? His unfathomable uh, riches in Christ Jesus. And so he's the commander of the battle. Jesus Christ himself is our tank, man. He is a fortress that we can climb into. Uh, his armor uh, surrounds us. The word of God uh, goes with us. The breastplate of righteousness shields us from the uh, fiery darts of the enemy. And listen, we can run into Christ and find strength. The book of Proverbs tells us uh, that in his name uh, we find fortress, and he is a strong tower. Right? He's rest for those that are weary. Uh, he's strength for those who are faint. And we can get to a place in our, in our spiritual life where, uh, where we can just climb into the tank and know, hey, I can do battle from inside of here. Uh, all God has to do is just take control of this situation, and I can just rest in Christ. Listen, I can't rob Peter to pay Paul anymore. I can't uh, work it out. I can't take any more overtime. I'm just trusting God to meet the financial need. Hey, I can't, uh, I can't send any more roses. I can't uh, leave any more sweet notes. I can't whisper any more uh, sweet nothings. Hey, this situation, this relationship is in the hands of God. So it's time that I just climb into a personal relationship with him and walk with him and allow him to minister to my life as I go throughout the fight. But too many times, you and I, man, we're wearing ourselves out trying to fight the fight of faith for ourselves when God has already declared us to be victors. Uh, the Holy Spirit is to be our tank commander, right? Uh, he is to, get, uh, to guide us, to lead us in the direction that we would go. But then because we are free moral agents, right, we can choose to drive underneath the leading of the, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit into the battle to engage the fight. Uh, or listen, we can uh, depart the fight and bug out and go home and quit on the marriage, quit on the relationship, quit on the struggle. Uh, but I promise you, you'll always look back with regret. You know, it's been said that uh, six months after um, a divorce, six months after a divorce, men who who initially wanted the divorce, maybe to uh, pursue greener grass and other pastures, maybe uh, who knows what led them to that place. But six months after the divorce, 92% of men say they made a huge mistake and they give it all to have their family back. And too many times we're pursuing the things that we think we want when God is trying to lead us to the things that we most need. Right, so get low so that we can know him. How do you get to know?
Christ. You get to know God the same way you get to know anyone else, which is spending time with Him, spending time in His presence, spending time uh, reading His Word, spending time talking to Him in prayer. Right? And so when, when battles surface in our lives, listen, we have no trust in Christ because we've not walked with Him when the day was bright, when the dawn was clear, when, when, things, uh, when things were going well. Uh, we've not uh, developed that relationship with Christ. And so when adversity comes, hey, uh, he is not our default, our fallback mechanism. Listen, we, we fall back into, hey, what can I muster? What, can I, what courage can I muster up? What strength uh, can I bring to this particular area? When Christ wants us to get to the place where, hey, we simply fall back into his name, that strong tower. Paul said it like this in Philippians 3, 9 through 14. And be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. What do we know about the power of his resurrection? Um, is that he defeated death and hell. Nothing could stop him. And he set eternity on its side, right? in the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hey, not resting in my own righteousness, not resting in my own works, but rather entering the fellowship of his sufferings. In other words, uh, being able to echo like Christ echoed, hey, I'm, I'm suffering the scorn, I'm suffering the shame of taking upon myself the sin of all of mankind, but I can see beyond the suffering the joy that is before, right? And we can undergo and, and uh, work through much adversity, much pain, if we set our eyes on Jesus, understanding, hey, he's given me the ultimate victory. Ephesians 3, 14 through 19 says it like this. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And, you, uh, and, you, and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Hey, do you know Christ today? Do you know his nature? Do you know truly that he is going to be there, that he is for you? Do you know, have you experienced in your life where as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, where, where he furnishes a table in front of you? Have you experienced God uh, shaking the mountains of the enemy before you? Uh, as you, uh, As you watch and you see your resources depleted. Right, Many times we, we see God uh, seemingly deplete our resources and we think, man, God, what in the world are you doing? Why are you leading me through difficult straits? God, I, I want to praise you. I want to thank you. I want to believe in you. I want to trust you. But it seems as though you're, you're walking me in to a corner, just as he did with Gideon's army. You know, he, he took Gideon's army out, Gideon a, uh, somewhat of a coward anyways, and, and he calls Gideon out, and he, he says, all right, Gideon, put together an army, and, and uh, thousands of men came forward, and, and he took them through several tests and trials, and when it came down to it, all Gideon was left with was 300 warriors, and they're supposed to do battle against the army of another nation, and guess who came out victorious, right? The God of Israel, uh, the God that we say is our God. But we must in the daytime, in the moments where the trials are lifted, when we've come out of the storm, we must continue in the sweetness of that relationship. Charles Wesley has said that the thing about Christianity is Christianity seems to undermine itself. When people are at the bottom looking at the top, they seek God. But as they begin to come up and make their way to the top, they forgot and forget that it's God. <coughs> Who put them there? With every head bowed and every eye closed, where are you at 
today with your relationship with Christ? Do you know him as your personal Savior? Has there been a time, a moment where you accepted him? Where you set aside the reservations and the fears? Maybe uh, what you were brought up thinking or knowing or understanding that there was something that you had to do to earn your salvation. Could I tell you that there's nothing that you can do to earn your salvation? The work that's necessary for redemption has been completed in Christ Jesus when he went to the cross for your sin and for mine. He cried, it is finished. Three days later, he ascended, uh, or three days later, he rose from the dead that you and I might have victory over death and hell for all of eternity. If you know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, how long has it been since you walked in the sweetness of a relationship with him? Do you know him today? Can you counteract the lies of the enemy that hit your heart in difficult straits because you've been in the word? Do you have the wooing of the Holy Spirit inside of your heart speaking to you in truth? Being able to counteract the lies of the enemy because you walk daily with Christ. Listen, there's power in a relationship with him. My prayer for you today and for you every day is that you would get to know Christ. Father God, we thank you today, Lord, as we as we set our affections and our and our gaze towards Calvary's cross now for the next few minutes. Lord, as we as we receive the Lord's Supper, God, as very comes, I I pray, God, that you would just um, sober us afresh and anew. Lord, help us to realize the great sacrifice that was paid that we might have a relationship with you. God, that you loved us above, above all else and you sacrificed your own son to have that relationship. God, may it not be something that we toil with. Maybe, may it not be something that we um, take a half-hearted approach towards, but, but rather, God, may we embrace a fresh and anew relationship with you. It's in your name we pray. If our host would go ahead and come forward and start passing the elements out. Um, you know, communion is, is, is a privilege. And it's a privilege that sometimes we don't take seriously. Uh, Richard asked me to come in and do the communion today. which I grew up in a church that we did communion every Sunday. You know, if you didn't do it in the morning, you came that night, they went off to a room and and uh, growing up in the church, my dad was a pastor also. I don't know if all y'all know that, but he pastored a hearing impaired church. My parents were both deaf. But, so my dad did sign language, and I would go to church, and it was really quiet. <laughs> a lot of hands of flying, but I, you know, I think I took for granted communion. And uh, when we would go on trips and stuff, we did communion on the Sunday. I mean, it was just a part of our well, there was one Sunday uh, many, many years ago when I was a kid that we went to uh, uh, Rio do or Sierra Blanca is the mountain, and we were out in the woods, and Dad did communion. I think it was the most beautiful time that I ever got to really think about it. My dad, of course, was a pretty animated guy, and you can imagine him signing, and he was signing about the body, and what Jesus went through, the piercing, and uh, in the blood. And I think from that time on, I've always wanted to, to really think about that part of the worship of taking communion. It, it's something that Jesus gave us in the upper room and instructed us to do. Could you imagine being Judas in that upper room and thinking about what was going to happen because Jesus called him out and he knew it. Peter unknowingly didn't know what he was doing that night as well. So um, life change church is, is, is something that, that we believe that if you come here and, and we are doing communion, we've been doing it through the month of November, that if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you have a relationship with him, then feel free to take communion with us today. So if you would take this bread and remember it's my body, that was really abused for you. Now, also, if you would take the blood, which is the cup, which is a representation or the remembrance of the blood that he shed.
for all of us. The forgiveness, this is forgiveness for all of us. Take now of this cup. Lord, we thank you so much for, for this time. And we, we just ask that you in our hearts and, and, and touch us through the thought of communion and, and the importance of the communion that we are getting the privilege to be a part of you every time we do this. We just can't thank you enough for what you did for us. Like that is the great, greatest gift of all. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, Barry, that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, we just want to give you some last words real quick of things that are happening on the church calendar. Next Sunday night, we're going to meet here. Um, I yeah. can't remember the exact time. I think it's uh, 5 or 6 o'clock, but just watch Facebook and our website. We're going to have a creatives meeting. This creatives meeting is not if you have talent, come and, and let's see what you've got that you can give to the church. We actually, Renee, don't fall off your piano bench here when I say this. We are going to schedule 2018 and outreaches that we can do throughout the year to um, get out into our community. So um, if that's something that interests you, if you have ideas, um, if you just want to come and be a part and be in the know, show up at 5 or 6 o'clock. Again, watch out for Facebook. We'll let you know. And uh, join us next Sunday night. We also have a teen get-together. This is our first ever Teen get together. We are very, very excited and very thankful. Jennifer and Brett will be opening their homes on sun, on Saturday, December 16th. Correct, Jennifer? And again, more details will be emailed out, sent on Facebook. Um, so parents of teenagers, let this be an opportunity for you to not miss this because our teenagers are kind of sporadic. We all live in different places. We go to different schools. This is a chance for us to get them together so they can start getting to know one another and also invite a friend that's unchurched to this event. And then um, just a few things we want to remind you of. That prayer app, there are several people that are still not a part of it. And let me tell you, you are missing out. So download that prayer app this week and become a part of that. So we can pray for you throughout the week and you can pray for others throughout the week as well. Um, and then one last thing is um, just to get it on your minds and to put on your calendar, we will be having a softball team. This is one of the first of many outreaches. So we are, um, Richard and John Tyree have put this together. So if you are interested in playing co-ed softball, please email hello at lifechangedallas.org. If this is your first time here, we'd like to thank you by giving you a special gift. If you'll meet us at Red Carpet, we will get that to you. And we just want to thank you for being a part of Life Change Church today. You are dismissed. <laughs>